uh, the last time that we solved this, we did it using the energy method. Remember, I set the potential energy equal to the sum of the two kinetic energies, the rotational and the translational. So, and then I said, the next time we'll do this using the force torque approach. So uh, remember, if you are asked to find the acceleration, that, that's the approach you need to take. And then using the acceleration, you can find the V. Okay. Um, I kind of like the force torque approach a little bit more because you, you, in order to do the force torque approach, you need to understand what's going on to the rolling object a little bit more. So you, you, it forces you to understand what's happening in the problem. So let's do it that way. We draw the object like that. And we draw, draw a free body diagram, the normal force. And here is the surface. And then we have the mg. And just like we did in chapter 5, we break the weight into its two components. The, this component and this component. We have uh, mg cos theta. Let me draw, write this bigger. And then this component is mg sine theta. Okay, I'm gonna close the store. Okay, now another thing you need, and uh, at first, uh, at first, at the first glance on the problem, you don't realize this, uh, but you also need friction. Even if the problem doesn't tell you, like with the block type problems, uh, the the prob the problem will tell you there's a uh, mu k is something 0.2, or you might say there's no friction with a block, it's a frictionless surface. But with a rolling object, you need friction. Even if the problem doesn't say there is friction, you need friction because objects wouldn't roll without friction. Okay, if it was frictionless and you put the object there, it would just slide. Without friction, it would just slide, and so it would act uh, like a, a block. You see, so you do need friction, and <coughs> the friction that you need is a uh, static friction, not kinetic. So the reason I know it's a static is because the object is not sliding; it's uh, the contact point is stationary. Remember how we were talking about rolling motion the other day? We said the contact point doesn't slide, it is actually the total velocity of the contact point is zero. So uh, since the contact point is not sliding, it, it's the static friction force which is pushing up on the object. And the static friction force is causing a torque on the object to make it roll. Okay. Another thing about this static friction force is that it's not equal to mu s n. Often in chapter 5 when we did problems we always assumed mu fs was mu sn. Well, that's the maximum value of the static friction force, okay? But the friction force doesn't have to equal mu sn. It's only mu sn when the rolling object is on the verge of slipping, okay? Then fs is equal to mu sn. For example, if I, uh, what was the angle in that uh, problem? Uh, did I have an angle? I should have, or oh, you know what, in that, in that case I didn't need an angle because um, all I needed was the height and uh, that we, with that you could find the v, v center of mass, okay? So let's assume that it's an angle, let's say 40. Well, what happens is if I make the angle bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, what's going to happen, okay? If, if the angle starts out 20, and the height is still three meters, it rolls nicely. If I make it 30, okay, maybe it rolls nicely. 40, maybe it rolls nicely. 50, 60, 70. How about if the angle is uh, 90 and it drops from three meters, okay? Is it gonna roll? If you have a 90 degree angle, you put an object there, will it nicely roll? No. There's a maximum limit how, uh, what angle you can make it where the, it still rolls. As a matter of fact, we can ask that question next. 
we can say what is the maximum angle that oh, I can have this and then I can give the mu s. Let's say the mu s is equal to um, a 0.6. The mu s, uh, the coefficient of static friction is 0.6. So with 0.6, so my question A will be find V final of the center of mass. Okay, that's what my first question is. And the other day we did that using the energy method. Today we're going to do it using the torque method, torque and force method. And then my second question is going to be, what is the greatest angle that you can incline this such that the object still rolls nicely? Okay. So what is theta max for pure rolling motion. So we can answer that too. Okay, so now coming back here, you can say, okay, you've got the N, you've got the mg cos theta, so the object accelerates down the incline. The normal force is equal to the mg cos theta, just like in chapter 5, N was mg cos theta. And then mg sine theta minus fs equals to ma. So the mg sine theta is the downward component of the weight of gravity minus the fs which is up equals ma. And now we, we got to do a torque equation. So these are the two force equations. Then we need a torque equation. Uh, some of the torques equals I alpha. Okay, and the force that is causing the torque is the Fs. You see, R times Fs, and the angle is 90, so sine of 90 is going to be 1. So RFs, and the torque is going to be into the board. So today I'll show you how to do the right hand rule and how uh, to get the direction of the torque. But the direction of the torque is not as important to be able to do the problem. Okay, so uh, the torque is equal to RFs. Okay, and that's the only force that is exerting a torque. The normal force is not exerting a torque because the normal force is directed towards the center of mass of the object. And the mg is not exerting a torque because the mg is concentrated at the center of mass. So it doesn't do, it doesn't apply a torque. Only Fs exerts a torque. And that's equal to the moment of inertia. Well, then here you put the shape of the object, solid sphere, 2 fifths mr squared, and then alpha. And then one of the R's cancels one of the R's, and Fs is equal to 2 fifths m. And R alpha is equal to the tangential acceleration of the edge of the sphere. Okay. And now here's where we use the fact that if this is pure rolling motion, A tangential is equal to A center of mass. Just like the other day we argued that, we made that argument, A tangential equals A center of mass, which is just equal to A. You don't even have to put a subscript. So then this is equal to 2 fifths MA. So then I can substitute that into over here, FS, okay? So I'm going to have MG sine theta minus 2 fifths MA is equal to MA. And then the M and the M and the M cancel. Two fifths A goes over there. So you have G sine theta is equal to five five. Uh, that's going to be seven fifths A. And then A is going to equal five seventh G sine theta, which is less than the acceleration of a block if there was no friction. Acceleration of a block without friction is G sine theta. Remember how we mentioned that the other day? Because the, this is a rolling object, its potential energy is going into two kinds of kinetic energies. So it's slower. So that's true. It's slower. A is 5 seventh of G sine theta. G sine theta would have been the acceleration of a block without friction. So the acceleration of this is less than that. 